Yeah, I don't think that ride is sick. Nah, cuz I think ride is shit. Why do all these grime MCs when I ride his dick? I bet that Simon Swami ride is shit. You ain't grime, you're a you're retired, you quit. Your dream's over, it's time to quit. You heard them bars and your mind them recited them. I bet you'd like to bite my shit. Let me take you back to the 19th of September 2019. Back when a new wave of Oz rappers were starting to climb their way to the top of the Oz rap scene, the likes of Chillin' It, Nerve, Husky, Wombat, Shadow, and many more were starting to chart their albums and tour across the country. While everything was bittersweet, a rapper by the name Mr. Righty sent for four of the biggest rappers in the country. Amongst those four rappers were Shadow, Nerve, Chillin' It, and Wombat. It was a nice chess move and lit a flame in the scene like it desperately needed at the time. And I'm here to try and tell you what really happened. Who is Mr. Righty, you ask? Let me explain. Mr. Righty is a grime artist and a pure lyricist. With only two official tracks that I know of, Yeah Yeah 64 and Morgue 48. And he also features on a couple of tracks with Psalm from That's Them. Although he's very well known and respected in the scene. I more think he's just a fan of hip hop in its purest form. Basically just ciphers and lyricism. He's appeared in some of the biggest and best grime ciphers the country has to offer. Alongside some rappers like Alex Jones, Fracture, Scotty Hines, Wombat and Nerve. Always holding his own in every single cypher he's been in, even coming out on top on a few occasions. They're all on YouTube if you want to check them out. Most notably, the 2018 cypher for Triple J. Anyway, this whole beef started back when Mr. Righty decided to drop a track alongside Son of Sam. The track was titled Big Boy Wheel, and he sent for four of the biggest rappers in the game at the time. Nerve, Shadow, Chillin' It and Wombat. To talk shit. Everyone wants to talk clash. No one's willing to clash. <laughs> Someone's gonna do it. This that, this that, this that, this that. This that real, this that big boy wheel. Nah, I ain't fucking with chill. This that word, this that truth that hurt. Nah, I ain't fucking with nerve. This that gallo, this that don't say hello. Nah, I ain't fucking with shadow. This that nah, I ain't fucking with bomb that night. Nah, on that night, nah, on that, this that real. This that it instantly had everyone talking and it lit a very healthy flame in the scene in my opinion. I'll try and break down the track the best I can and let you know why it was these four rappers that he sent for. The first rapper he sent for was... Nerve. He accuses Nerve of using too many filler bars, basically rhyming for the sake of rhyming just to make it sound technical and using too many words that doesn't make sense. He also subliminally dissed Nerve back in a 2018 cipher. At the time, Nerve was sitting right next to him and even gassed him up in the cipher, not knowing that the diss was aimed towards him. Roll with the top crew, said he wanna clash, can't shot through. Can't tell if that's an MC or some kid I picked on in the tuck shop queue. <laughs> next in his targets, he had Wombat. He also accused Wombat of using too many words to rhyme just for the sake of rhyming and also using too many filler bars. And also calls him out for having lyrics about clashing other rappers, but never actually having the balls to stand up and do it. Nerve and Wombat just got too many filler lines, bro. Just too many, just too many like, I call them like that'll do bars. Like, you know, they get so, they get so caught up in their, in their techie flows and their seven syllable multis that they're like, fuck it, I'll just say a few that don't really fit and don't really make any sense just because they rhyme. Yeah, just, I'm just going to say it because it rhymes, fuck it. Like, okay. Next in his sights, he had Chillin' It. This one seemed to be the most personal. He accuses Chillin' It of stealing Alex Jones's flow and style. He cleverly says in the song that Chillin' It's tour is just an Alex Jones tribute show. He also says in an interview with Chazza that he can't stand Chillin' It's music. He thinks that he puts on a certain persona and is very corny. Like you say, there's no personal beef. Straight up, I think Chillin' It seems like a goose. I've met the cunt twice. He says he's never met me. The cunt seems like a goose. I think he's see-through as fuck. I think he really tries real hard to keep up a certain persona. I know you don't agree with that. And I think he's just a straight up, he's evolved a bit, but I think he's just such a fucking flea clone. Like, I just, for me, if I hear a rapper and they sound so much like someone, I can't listen to it, bro. Like, I can't sit through a chillin' it verse. Like, straight up and down, I can't sit through it. It's just so cheesy to me. Okay, next in the firing line was Perth MC Shadow. He accuses Shadow of switching up his style. First of all, trying to sound too Aussie like Trem, and then second of all, switching his flow up to sound like he's from the UK even copying some of Skepta's bars. He also said that Shadow used to message him back in the day and give him props all the time as to how good of an MC he was. Man like Shadow say, whoa, can't quite tell where we come from though. 2014, yeah, he wanna sound Aussie. 2016, man, wanna sound homie. 2018, I'd get them three big wheels on a hip hop show. Now man wanna give me a gobby. Man wanna say I'm his favorite. Fuck man, it's just a hobby. We get sport. Another reason why he sent for these four MCs is because there was supposed to be another 50-50 fully gas cypher coming up. He wanted to create a bit of a buzz before that happened to get some hype going. 
It's also alleged that he was sitting on this track for at least six months before deciding to drop it. Out of the four MCs, Shadow and Nerve chose not to respond. I believe Nerve was about to drop his Mama's Boy EP and was occupied elsewhere. Chillin' It decided to take to Instagram Live and basically told Mr. Righty to come back when he can make a hit song. Wombat, on the other hand, wasted no time at all, dropping a diss track on his Instagram coming straight for Mr. Righty's head and said he'll clash him any day of the week. In a fake cunt, you're in danger if you think you're safe. You're a lame ass gay cunt, get back in your lane. You wanna clash me for the fame, but even your day one think that'll blaze ya. Make your best mate turn to a trader. I don't even rate ya, cause I'm doing you a favour. Darth Vader with a saber. Fat pig, you're getting pissed off. You ain't never drop a hit song, now you wanna talk shit about me. Trust them back down like a little bitch when it kicks off, we get the gist of it. Righty clapped straight back, sending again for Wombat. It's rumoured that Fraxa got them both on the phone to organise an actual clash. This is exactly what Righty wanted. Things were falling right into his hands. Clash is set for January, cuz. Don't go fucking hiding behind your followers now. Trying to find an excuse to pull out. It's war for him! Yeah, the bones left. Did you guys communicate directly before the battle at all? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, yeah, yeah. So, like, cause I, we had, like, a fracture got on a call and he got both of us and we were on the call at the same time and shit and um it was just being smart asses to each other and shit type of shit you know what i mean like yeah it was definitely serious but a bit of banter and shit but i did want to shell the cunt because not even for him dissing me but just disrespecting like nerve and chill and shadow and stuff bro and like They've done nothing but be like good cunts to the grime scene, bro. You know what I mean? And then this cunt comes out of nowhere. That's the main reason I replied. It's just because they weren't going to do it. Someone had to do it. It was then confirmed that Wombat would finally clash Mr. Righty and they would have four months to prepare. They even got on the phone together to establish some boundaries so things wouldn't get physical and turn to violence. The anticipation from the whole scene was electric. They even decided to have only MCs at the clash so all the fans wouldn't jump on Wombat's side. Then, after months and months of preparation, the day finally arrived. Heard them bars and you want them recited them, I bet you'd like to bite my shit. You wanna claim I'm a crackhead, you'll get popped like a blackhead. Bass got bars, I can take them back when sprayed him like a maimen with a magnum. Face it on the favourite, they can raid it, sprayed him like a maimen with a Mac 10. Stop claiming your matches, shut Unfortunately, on the day, it was very one sided. Wombat bring his absolute A game, and Mr. Righty didn't show up whatsoever, pulling his phone out after just a couple of bars. Oh, Plexi on the guys, you Hi, it's those all right this way. Okay, how you living? Let's talk about the cash went missing. Fuck you. Oh, Jesus, oh. this early. This early. Yo, let me catch this. Let me catch this. One second. It was a real letdown for all the fans. By the way, this video is no hate to Mr. Righty. One of the main reasons we feel let down is because Mr. Righty instigated the whole thing and let us down on the day. And we all know that he has way more to offer than what he produced. I think one thing we can all agree on is that Wombat clearly won the clash. Although I found it funny. A few months later, Mr. Righty jumped on Fraxia's podcast and didn't really give Wombat any props at all for winning. If I'm Wombat, I'm not exactly fucking over the moon with going um, one wheel up versus one wheel up with a guy who read off his phone and fucked his bars up. But just kind of made the point if I was him, I wouldn't be exactly over the moon with with going one for one with with a performance like I put through. You know, we went back and forth a bit, but it was all love, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the beef would eventually die down, although Wombat had a few words for Mr. Righty on his interlude track on Chillin' It's album. But thankfully, all the beef stayed on wax, and that's how it should be. Wombat even said that he'd do a track with Mr. Righty in the future. His overall goal was to get more rappers to clash and bring the scene closer together. I guess he achieved his goal. Personally, I think this was great for the scene and I'd love to see more of it. No one gets hurt and it's all kept on wax, how it should be. And I wanted to send that in the lead up to that 50-50 event, the last fully gassed, and try and create a bit of hype around that. Because it, it was the last one, Fracture has explicitly said, this is the last fully gassed. I think it's just so much work for Frax, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I, I want to try and spark something here. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but and he hasn't done anything since, has no, he? No, he hasn't. He did. Yeah, no, he hasn't. No. He, he's. I want to do a song with him, bro. I, I want to get him on a grime track. Like, there's no hard feelings. Like, it's just, it's just fucking rap at the end of it. It's just words, bro. Like, I don't have beef with any cunt, bro. 